Hey everyone, it's Timmy Gobbles, and today I'm doing a little tile destruction tutorial. So here we go, I'm doing some digging, breaking some tiles, and I'm just gonna jump off the side and end it all. There we go. And so I'm gonna be working with this voxel pack from Kenny. Uh, it has some nice tiles that are kind of reminiscent of Minecraft. I'm gonna start, go ahead and start a new project. And once that loads up, let's start working on the tile map. So this tile set is actually going to be a lot higher resolution than you're used to me using. But it's usually going to be like, I don't know, 20 by 20 pixels or something. This one's a whole 128. It's huge. And so I have that same issue where I have a bunch of blank tiles. And uh, using those buttons before it didn't work. So go ahead and load up the game. And bam, 100 or 401 errors. Look at that. Amazing. So to fix that, I am just gonna delete this and start over. We'll just we'll just do a fresh import. And you don't have to let it pick the tiles for you. You can actually hit no. You don't have to hit yes every time there. And if you want, you can just select the tiles yourself. As long as you have the texture um, size right, it should work out. Next, I'm going to be putting collision on a lot of these. And you know, a lot of these are just squares. So what I can do is I can highlight all the squares and I can just do it once and that's nice. And then after that, I can do the ones that aren't squares. It's a little easier. I think it's F to like add a new region, but I don't really remember. Okay, so next I want to add a custom data layer called diggable. And I know I misspelled it, but you know, just don't point it out. And so things that are diggable, we're going to give that a true. That way, oh look, there, here's some, um, I was going to do a little mock-up and I uh, forgot to delete these. Let's get rid of those. Right, so I'm just going to put something basic together that uses the things and make sure they work. And maybe I'll expand on it later, who knows. Add a bunch of different colors and stuff. And, uh, and the rest of it's gray. Bam, and we're gonna slap together a player scene just to make sure that uh, we have something to interact with or to interact using. You know what I mean. All right, so what do we need? I need a collision and a body. And the body is gonna have a, some components. So we got a head, a left arm, a right arm, left leg, right leg, and then a, even a body sprite. So I might do a little bit of cutout animation in this project, so we'll see how it goes. But pretty much, um, you, you take the body and everything else is connected to that. Like the head, the arms, and the legs are all, that's kind of the, the common joint is the body. And I've added a little bit of logic for jumping and moving around. And you can look at my previous video for figuring that kind of stuff out, or you know, it might even be better to look at someone else do that, because I do it stupid. And I'm going to add a little bool. The bool is going to tell the game when I'm digging or not digging. And, you know, maybe when I click the left button, it digs. And when I let go, it stops digging. Then in physics process, we can use that bool to decide when we emit, when we emit a signal. And that signal, we can pick up with main to decide what to do with it. And I need... I need to make sure the point I'm trying to dig isn't too far away from the character. So I'm going to get the mouse position and subtract the character position. Actually, I'm just going to take the distance too, and that's fine. And as long as that's under some kind of value, then we're going to emit that signal. And just for some debugging, I'll put a little print line in there. Okay, so uh, nothing's happening. What's going on here? Um, so add some more print lines. Nothing's working when I click. Jumping works. Uh, it turns out mouse buttons aren't keys, so if you use this unhandled key event, it's not going to work. But if you throw it in an unhandled input event, it works fine. I was trying to learn how the unhandled event thing works, because you know you always search it up online, and that's what people are using, so I thought I'd try it out. Uh, now let's deal with the digging signal. So first I need to connect that player signal to a method in main. And it just auto populates one for you, which is really nice. And we need to pass through that mouse position that I was passing through um, from player. And just ignore anything on this scene that doesn't make sense. So, first off, we need to take this mouse position and convert it to a local position. So, no 2Ds have this, and tile maps inherited this to local function 
So that's going to return the local position of this global position. So after it's a local position, uh, ultimately we want to know what tile the mouse is pointing at. So we're going to use this function local to map. So it takes a local position and converts it to a map position. So local position is a vector 2, and this is going to spit out a vector 2i. So a, a, a two-dimensional vector of integers. Okay, and let's see if it works. So look at that. Look at those, look at those uh, integer vectors. Beautiful. Next, we want to get the cell tile data that we're clicking on. And I haven't, I don't have any other layers yet, so it's going to be layer zero. And we're going to be looking at that tile position. And look at that. What does that even mean? Tile data hash 281 whatever. No one knows what that means. So that's going to be some kind of object. And we need to decipher what we want that object to do. So tile data have this get custom data. And you pass through the name. And it spits out the value if, if that exists. So let's go ahead and do it, click on it. It returns true because we made those diggable. And if I click something that didn't have a tile on it, we get a nice error. And the reason why is if there's no, if there's no tile in that cell, the get cell tile data is gonna return null. And when we try to use the get custom data on a null, it's gonna say, hey, I don't know what that is. It doesn't work. So then we wanna filter out the cases where the tile data is null. And we can use an if statement for that. So fun fact, ifs um, evaluate the Boolean value. And so the Boolean value of null is false. So this if is gonna ignore it if tile data is null. And then if it exists, it'll do this. So now we wanna make sure that that tile is diggable. And so we'll use the if, and we'll pull that custom data. And if it's true, then we're gonna erase that cell at that position. And let's take a look. We don't need the debugging statement anymore. And click on these, and bam, look at that. And if they're too far away, oh, there we go. We dig dark through the world. So I think that was enough to fix the problem. But I, I'm going to do a little more polish. You know, this looks like pretty lame. Nothing hard to tell what's going on. So one thing I wanted to do was drops. When you dig something in Minecraft or Terraria, something comes out. And so we'll need a, a pickup class or a drop class or I don't know, whatever you want to call it. So it has a, a collision and a sprite. And that's about it. And we're going to maybe add a script would be good too. I think I ended up making it a rigid body reason I made it a rigid body was I wanted to do a little bit of physics with it. I wanted to bounce a little bit as it falls, not just kind of fall and stop, if you know what I mean. We'll go ahead and attach a script, and we'll give it a name, because we're going to be calling it in other, you know, in main. We'll have to spawn them and stuff, so it's good to give it a class name. Or maybe it's not, I don't know. So, what is it? So we're gonna need a physics up process or whatever function because it's gonna be falling and we're gonna have to deal with it moving and stuff. And so rigid bodies use move and collide instead of move and, move and slide. Um, and you have to tell it how far to move. So I, I usually just use the linear velocity, but I, I don't know, there's probably better ways to do this. What's nice about move and collide is it returns a collision. So you can actually call it, and if it hits something, it returns that information. And you can use that information to change the behavior. So right now it just kind of sits there, and I can't really interact with it, and because we haven't done anything with this move and collide stuff. Oh, one thing I had to figure out was the sleeping and can't sleep thing. So I actually want it to fall, and I needed to tell it not to sleep, because otherwise it would uh, land and then just not move. 
And so back on player, I need an area that tracks when we're close enough to a pickup, so we can pick it up. And we're gonna go ahead and connect that body entered node. So when a body enters that area, then we wanna check to make sure, and we're gonna add the group player. So if that body is in the group pickup, then we're gonna to want to have that body call some kind of function. I'm gonna just call it collect or something. I haven't even made it yet. And maybe it takes the player position. So maybe we'll use a tween to move it towards the player and then queue free it or something. But for now, just, um, you know, for mocking this up, I'm just gonna use queue free. And let's go ahead and test it out. Bam, picked it up. Look at that, it's gone. Now I've decided I'm gonna be using a health value instead of just diggable. And the reason I'm gonna do this is so that when your character mines it, it takes a couple hits to dig up the thing. It's not just click and it's gone. So everything on here, I'm just gonna, I added a new data layer called health and I'm just gonna make everything five. And now we're gonna do a little bit of animation. So right now the character kind of sucks. It doesn't, its arms and legs doesn't move and it's, you know, it all kind of wimpy. So first thing I had to fix was to change the pivot position on all of the different sprites because the pivot position automatically starts at the center of the sprite and we really want the arms and the legs to move from where they attach to the body. Same for the head. I don't know if I changed the, the body pivot position, but who cares? So I'm gonna go ahead and add some debugging print lines to the function in main that handles the player signal that they're digging. And the reason I'm gonna do this is because I'm gonna show off a couple methods to delay how often the player hits. So first off, we're gonna make a timer and we can check if that timer is playing, or I'm sorry, if it's stopped. Now, if it is stopped, we're gonna start it and I'm at the dig and we'll make it a one shot so that it just does the timer and it's over. And there we go. So if we click and hold, dig, 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 and it's destroyed, easy. Uh, speaking of digging, I need something to dig with. So let's go ahead and take this um, pickaxe and slap it on our character. And we'll probably want to make it a child of one of the arms. That way when the arm moves, the pickaxe will move too. And we can just kind of position it and we'll move the pivot and put it in the hand. And that looks good enough. Is that the right way for a pickaxe or should the little end be on the other side. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna make a couple animations for this video, starting with walk. So I've just kinda changed the angle of the two legs. And there you go, it's moving pretty good. Look at him walk, or run, or I don't even know. And I'm gonna make a swinging animation for the pickaxe. So again, with that, we're just literally gonna be moving the rotation of the arm. And it kinda looks good enough. I, I don't really know. I don't know what it looks like swinging a pickaxe. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a strike pickaxe function. And this is so that I can call it in that animation. And that animation is gonna do all the work that was being done in this physics process area. So if the player's digging, we can tell the animation player to play this animation. And it's a looping animation, so it'll just continue to play. And we're gonna go ahead and call that strike pickaxe function when the pickaxe reaches the end of its swing. Now when the player's not digging, we need to tell that animation player to stop playing that animation. So if we go ahead and grab the animation that it's playing, and if that equals the swinging one, we can tell it to stop. So I, when I hold the mouse, I swing, and when I let go, I stop swinging. All right, next I wanna talk about the animation tree. So first you need to pick a kind of root. So I chose um, node blend tree. And this might look familiar if you've ever worked with like Unreal Engine, they have that blueprint thing. So we can add little pieces to this graph and then it kind of starts from the left and works its way to the output. Or I guess you can follow the paths along. So my idea here was I want to be able to walk and swing the pickaxe at the same time. So I can't really do that with the animation player unless I make an animation that does specifically that. But the other advantage of this 
is using this time scale node, I can actually scale how the player walks. And I want to go ahead and put the add, I want the bottom node of the add to be the swinging animation. So when that add is at a value of one, it's going to add the full animation of the swing. And when it's at zero, the player's not going to be swinging. So now I need to change those values in the code. And I just kind of threw them in process. I'm not sure if it should be in a physics process or not, but it's animation, so you kind of want it a little smoother. So now, based on the velocity the character's moving, the animation will play that walking animation. And now we want to do the same thing for digging. So when the player is digging, we want the animation tree to set that add amount and you can use this set function to one. And when it's not digging, we want that animation to set that value to zero. So click and it plays that and it still emits that signal so we can still dig. Now the animation tree caused me to keep getting these two errors and I interpreted it as it wants me to use call deferred. So I went ahead and used call deferred instead of just set and that didn't fix anything. So there's, those errors are just there forever. I don't know if that's a good O issue or if I'm silly. Next problem was I was using the distance of the velocity when I should be using just the X value of the velocity. So when I was jumping, the legs were moving all funny. Okay, now it's time for some pickup physics. So I want the pickup to drop, to kind of bounce a little bit. So one of the ways we can do that is when we get that collision, there's some leftover velocity and we can just make that velocity go in the opposite direction. So using that get remainder function and we just need to rotate it backwards. And the easiest way to rotate a vector backwards is just to multiply it by negative one. Okay, so it's bouncing and I set a, I had a little coefficient on it and that was a little too high. And another thing was I probably should have scaled it with delta so I also wanted to give it a little angular velocity so that when it falls, it like kind of looks like it's rolling a little bit, even though it's not going to. And I tried a couple other settings, I'm just kind of playing around and they didn't really seem to do anything. So uh, don't, anything I do with rigid body, don't, you know, grain of salt. I have no idea what I'm doing. Look at it roll. Uh, so maybe every time it collides, we want to reduce the amount it rolls instead of um, just setting it equal to a specific value. All right, and go ahead and pass delta through there. And final result. All right, it bounces a little bit, it turns a little bit, and then it's done. Ta-da, let's go ahead and export that variable, throw that scene in there. And now we need to tell, um, oh, I'm gonna go ahead and add a node just for the pickups. So anytime I'm instantiating something and do a scene a bunch of times, I like to just throw them into a container. That way, later on, I can have a way to just clear them all out. Okay, so the new pickup position is gonna be based on the tile that got destroyed. So if we take the map position and we send it to local, so map to local, and then we send that to global with the, the to global thing, it'll actually give the center of, the, of that tile. Oh, and I forgot to add it to that, um, that no 2D pickups I was talking about, oops. And there we go. And so here I have that that velocity left over from kind of just debugging stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate that randomly between, um, you know, like a little bit and reduce that velocity and see how that looks. All right, that's not bad. It's they're they're kind of clumping off and they have a little bounce to them and I'm too close that time so I just pick it up. See it has a little little random roll to it. I think that that doesn't look too bad. And that's about all I want to do in this video. So I hope you guys enjoy and I hope you have a good day.